So a lot of you are not going to be able to solve this math problem, not because you're not capable of solving the problem, but uh, primarily I think a lot of you are going to give up too soon. So stick with the problem. But let me go and explain what we have here. So what we're trying to do is find the next three numbers in this pattern. So we have a sequence of numbers. So the first number is 1. The second number is 2. The next number is 3.5. Then we have 5.5. Then we have eight, and what we're looking for is the next three numbers in this sequence, in this pattern. But let's go ahead and get into the solution. And to answer the question here, we need to know what is the pattern between these numbers. So we're going from one to two, and then two to 3.5, 3.5 to 5.5, 5.5 to eight. Well, what's going on? How are we going from one number to the next number to the next number to the next number? Because if we can't figure out the relationship between these numbers, there's no way we're going to be able to answer uh, what the next three numbers in this sequence are. All right, so how do we figure this out? Well, this is not so uh, obvious. And what you have to do is just kind of start playing around with these numbers. Now, there's different approaches you could take uh, to kind of play around with these numbers to see or discover a pattern. I suspect uh, most people, are, their eyes are going to come right over here and they're like, all right, let me go and just start taking a look at the first two numbers in this pattern, in this sequence. And let's go ahead and see what we have here. Okay, so we're starting with one and then we go from one to two. Well, what happened there? Well, obviously, we added a one. Okay, so we took uh, this one, we added a one, and we got two. All right, so if uh, adding one to the previous uh, term or the uh, uh, number in this pattern to get the to the next number if that's the rule well let's go ahead and test that so we'll take this two and we'll add one and what happens well two plus one two plus one is obviously three and the next term here the next number in this pattern in this sequence is 3.5 so that doesn't look like that is going to work so unfortunately, we're going to have to continue to look, and a lot of you might be saying, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, don't make this problem so hard. Well, you know, again, you know, this is a pattern, and we're going to have to kind of look deeper. But you should look at this problem as fun, okay? So some of you are saying fun. Fun to me is, you know, playing video games or whatever the case is. Well, hey, you know what? At least you're using your brain here. And let's go ahead and look at the problem maybe this way. All right, now some of you uh, may have, uh, your eyes might have been drawn to maybe these um, uh, terms in the sequence. So we have 2 and 3.5. So what's going on here? Well, if we tried to look at a pattern starting from these two numbers, well, to go from 2 to 3.5, we have to add 1.5 to this 2, because 2 plus 1.5 gives us 3.5. Okay, well, if that is the case, uh, let's go ahead and test this. So if we take this 3.5, uh, 3.5, not, uh, not I'm going to write this a little bit better. So 3.5, and then we add a 1.5. Do we get to a 5.5? Well, no, we get to a 5 or 5.0. So that is not right as well, right? So now at this point, some of you might be saying, okay, this is just too much for me. I'm going to quit. I don't want to do this anymore. Well, don't give up. Don't give up. Again, as I indicated, uh, uh, you know, in the beginning of this video, a lot of people aren't going to get this right primarily because they're going to stop looking for patterns. Okay. Now, some of you might be saying, well, how about if we try something different? You know, we're kind of adding, uh, we're trying to find some sort of number. Uh, that goes for, uh, that we can add from the previous number to this number, you know, to get to the next um, uh, term in the sequence. And that type of sequence, by the way, is called an arithmetic sequence. So some of you out there may have some algebra knowledge and skills and are familiar with uh, a big topic, huge topic uh, in math, in advanced math called sequence and series. And there's different types of sequence, uh, like things like arithmetic sequences. I'll just show you real quick because this is not what we're dealing with. So if I had two, uh, let's say two, three, uh, so to go from two to three, uh, well, let me make this more interesting here. So I'm just kind of going off on a tangent a bit here. So two to five, what do we do? Well, we add three, right? So uh, if adding three is the rule, then five plus three is eight. And then we could continue on eight plus three is 11. So here the terms are 
uh, being separated by three. Okay, this type of situation is called an arithmetic sequence. And then we're going to show you another type of sequence called a geometric sequence. These are very, very common. So what if I had two, and then let's multiply each term by two to get the next term. So that would be two, four, then four times two is eight, eight times two is 16, 16 times two is 32. So here, the relationship is we're multiplying by two to get to the next term. But here, you know, it doesn't appear that we are, you know, doing any of this. So this doesn't uh, appear to be an arithmetic or a geometric type of sequence. Because here, I'm like, all right, well, one to two. Well, if I multiply by two, well, then, okay, one times two is two. But then two times two is four. So that's not going to work. So maybe we're dividing in some sort of way as well. So you can kind of like say, well, I'll take two divided by one. Take this divided by that and I get two, well, if that's the case, maybe then two plus two is four, that's not working for us as well. So at this point, a lot of people are going to just get you know, frustrated and be like, ah, I quit, I'm gonna move on to something more interesting and exciting like Netflix or my Amazon Prime uh, account. <laughs> but in all seriousness, you can figure this out. You just have to continue to work at it, right? And sometimes when you have patterns uh, in mathematics, they're not so obvious, okay? But, you know, we got to keep playing around with these numbers. So let's do this, okay? Now, what I'm going to give you here is a gigantic clue, okay? This is a clue. So what's going on here? All right, well, let's take the difference. We, from 1 to 2, we added 1. From 2 to 3.5, we added 1.5. All right, well, this is a clue. This is the beginning of the actual pattern that we need to understand in order to solve this problem. So I'm gonna encourage uh, those of you out there that wanna kind of figure this out on your own, and that's awesome. We'll go ahead and continue to look at the patterns between these two numbers right here. Okay, so we already figured out between one and two, it's one, between two and 3.5, it's 1.5. What is it between 3.5 and 5.5 and 5.5 and eight? Because once you figure this out, you're going to see a pattern. Are you struggling in math because of confusing lessons? Maybe the teacher's not showing you all the steps you need or things are happening too fast. Well, there is a better way. So come on over to my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. There you'll find clear step-by-step -step instruction by me that will definitely make a huge difference in your math success. So make sure to check out all my courses by following the links in the description. Okay, so 1 to 2, okay, we increased by 1, and then 2 to 3.5, uh, we had to add 1.5 to 2 to get to 3.5. Now to 3.5 to 5.5, we uh, had to add 2, okay, to 3.5 to get to 5.5. And from 5.5 to get to 8, we had to add 2.5. All right, so now do you see the pattern? Okay, well, hopefully you're like, well, I'm kind of, I'm thinking that this one to this 1.5 here looks like maybe we're adding a 0.5, right, each time. So looks this looks pretty good. So one uh, to 1.5, we added a 0.5. If we add a 0.5 to 1.5, we're going to get to 2. And then if we add a 0.5 to 2, we're going to get to 2.5. So yes, indeed, we find or we found a pattern that is working between these terms in this pattern. Okay, now this is a little bit confusing, so we do have to be very careful here. So how can we find the next term, uh, the next number in this pattern, next number in this sequence of numbers? Well, it looks like what we have to do here is we take, uh, we subtract the previous terms, right, from two minus one. So that is, of course, uh, uh, one, okay, that's our difference. And then we're going to add 0.5, okay? So one plus 1.5. So we'll have 1.5, and then we take that nut, that number and we add it to that previous number to get to the next number. Okay, so again, you know, uh, this part of the problem can be confusing. That's why you have to be really focused here, but it's not overly complex, right? So what we're gonna do is we're going to find the difference between the last two consecutive terms. We'll add a 0.5. Uh, to that difference, and then we're going to add it to that previous number to get to our next number in the pattern. So let's go ahead and, and uh, figure out the next term after 8, the next number in this pattern. 
Now, if you want to go ahead and try this on your own before I show you this, you want to go ahead and pause the video, but let's go ahead and figure this out right now. Okay, so we have to be, you know, focused here. So from 5.5 to 8, uh, we increased uh, from we increased by 2.5, right? So we had to add 2.5 to 5.5 to get to 8. All right, so the next number, we're going to have to take this 2.5, and what we're doing is we're adding 0.5 to that uh, increase, right? So now 2.5 plus 0.5 is 3. So we're going to add 3 to this 8. Okay, so 8 plus this 3 will be the next number in our pattern in our sequence, which is 11. Okay, so if we understand that, then now we can go ahead and get the rest of the numbers. So now... Uh, we have 8, and then 11 is our next number. To get the next number, we're going to have to take the difference, right? So between 11 and 8, uh, the difference is 3. Then we're going to add 0.5, right? So we're going to add 0.5, uh, and then uh, that is going to, of course, be 3.5. And then we're going to take that 3.5 and add it to this number here, the previous uh, number in the sequence. So 11 plus 3.5 is what? Well, that's 14.5. So now we have our second number in this pattern. So 11 and 14.5. Again, you remember, we take a look at these two numbers and we're like, okay, the difference is one. And then once we have that, we're going to add 0.5. So this is, in this case, 1.5. And then we add it to this previous number. So 2 plus 1.5 is 3.5. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this up. So between 11 and 14.5, the difference there is 3.5. We're going to add a 0.5, which is, of course, 4. And then we'll take that 4 and we add it to the previous uh, term, which is 14.5. So 14.5 plus 4 is 18.5. And voila, we have all the numbers in our pattern, pattern or in our sequence. Okay, so again, this is not so uh, intuitive, not so you know obvious what to do. That's why uh, you know I indicated that a lot of people could get this right. They just you know it's like a crossword puzzle or any kind of riddle or something. You know most people can solve these type of things. Uh, you just got to stick with it. You know some of you will get this faster than others. I think the key here is really. Um, practicing you know if you if some of you out there like doing you know like crossword puzzles or playing sudoku those are that's outstanding stuff for your brain health i mean you got to keep using your brain your brain is a uh, muscle and uh, if you don't challenge it with like interesting you know, problems and riddles and you know things like that you know your brain just you know forgets to learn how to problem solve now if you're interested in these type of uh, pattern problems sequence problems uh, i have a couple of suggestions for uh, uh, some of you out there now if you happen to be at a level of mathematics where you really do need to learn about arithmetic sequence and series uh, that's pretty advanced uh, but anyways, I'm going to go ahead and direct you to my pre-calculus course. I teach that pretty heavy duty in that course. So you get complete instruction on everything you need to know there. And that, again, that is, uh, you know, pretty pretty high-level mathematics. But uh, some of you out there might be like, yeah, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to learn pre-calculus, but maybe just kind of want to dabble around with these type of problems. Well, I have two courses you can check out. So the first is my foundations course, and my other course is Math Skills Rebuilder. So in my foundations course, I basically teach you just basic mathematics. It's not, it's a quick uh, course, self-paced, but in there I do have a section on uh, patterns and sequences, things, uh, problems that are uh, similar to the one we just did right here. Now in my math skills rebuilder course, I teach you everything in this foundation course. Okay. So the foundations course is actually part of the math skills rebuilder course. But then in this course, I teach you a ton of algebra, a ton of uh, geometry, even some basic trigonometry and some broad, uh, basic probability and statistics. Uh, by the time you finish this course, you'll have a very well-rounded uh, math education that you can kind of, you know, do anything you like with it. You can kind of learn more advanced, maybe like pre, uh, more more advanced math, like pre-calculus or more advanced uh, geometry. So for those of you that want to kind of recapture uh, your math skills that you forgot maybe 30, 40 years ago from learning in school, or maybe some of you are like, you know what, boy, I could have done so much better in math. I wish I had better math teachers. I wish I was more of a dedicated student. But whatever the case is, don't feel bad about your past, okay, especially when it comes to education. Believe me, when I, I tell you right now, 
uh, in high school, I was a terrible student. Well, I don't say the worst. I did graduate from high school. It wasn't until I joined the United States Marine Corps where I got some discipline and kind of, you know, took some time to <laughs> to grow up and finally figure out what I want to do. And then later when I went to college and, you know, got a degree in mathematics, I was, you know, more mature, more focused. So you certainly can't look back at your high school years and say, well, you know, I did poor poorly in math in high school. Therefore, I must be bad at math. Please don't think that uh, all of you are capable of learning mathematics. But again, you got to put it, put in the time and effort. And it does take time to acquire a lot of these skills. But these type of problems are fun because, you know, they don't require a lot of math, but they do require commitment and tenacity. And they're really, really good for your brain, you know, in terms of keeping it fresh and, uh, you know, uh, again, you know, one of the things that they a lot of studies show, especially for some of you out there that are older, is that, uh, you know, if we don't keep using your brain, challenging it, you know, it can atrophy just like any other muscle. OK, so please, whether it's doing basic math problems or crossword puzzles, find something that you can you do that you like that that will keep your brain sharp. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.